Hey guys, welcome to the channel and in today's episode I'm going to show you how I installed my Starlink on my horse trailer and maybe it'll give you an idea for your horse trailer or your RV um, for some possible solutions but this is what I came up with mine. Um, as you know or may not know, setting up Starlink at every campsite is a huge pain in the ass. So, um, I wanted a more permanent solution with the option to still have this satellite dish mobile depending on if we park under trees or not. I came up with this solution and hopefully you guys find that useful and towards the end of the video I'm going to show how I'm going to tuck some uh, of that Starlink cable away so it's out of the way especially in the back area where there's animals. Hopefully you guys find this useful and let's roll that intro. All right, first up, do you have power in the back of your trailer? I didn't, so I had to come up with a solution for that. So I have a stock combo horse trailer. I ended up cutting this portion of the slat right here. There's this nice little window where it's not really gonna affect the airflow, but I figured this little portion could be my, my, my plug port. So if I ever wanna add more ports, I can, but I have a outgoing port and an ingoing port right here and we usually use one of these cords we don't have it hooked up right now but we run a cord down and over to this outlet right here and this is how we get shore power from the trailer to the back of the trailer or if you have an outlet at a campsite you can take this cord put it in here and the power can go run directly to an outlet if you're at like an RV park or something, or if, if you have shore power somewhere. Uh, coming inside, that's the incoming power side right here. And it routes up and it ties into my surge protector. And I'll leave a link for this APC surge protector in the description below so you guys can see this, but it has a battery backup, which is very, very useful. Um, especially when you lose power and you need to keep the Starlink going, especially while you're working like I do. So it could probably run the Starlink for about 10 minutes uh, if you lose power at any point. The second plug that you saw right here on the outside, it goes up to an inverter, which I'm gonna have a completely different video on that, but it's a secondary power source that I've been creating for the horse trailer. Right now we have the inverter running the surge protector, which is running the Starlink. So I have shore power and a solar backup battery system for running the Starlink and trailer. So that's how I get power back here in the back of the trailer uh another thing since you're probably noticing it is when you full time in a horse trailer storage is key right so getting everything up and out of the way i built this shelf and it there's not much to it other than some bolts bolted into this sliding rail frame right here and it runs across here and i have extra support built into the shelf right here for the batteries so in case you were worried about that lots of opportunities to uh put shelves in your horse trailers and then it also uh really allows you to hang a lot of things and have extra storage up there once we got the shelf build great place for the starlink location right there and then also that surge protector runs like fans for our dogs and whatnot Okay, next up I'm up here on my hay rack platform and I wanted a more, more permanent solution especially for when we travel for the Starlink and I before we had it on that stand and you had to break it down all the time and uh, 
wrap the cord up and we kept burning through these cords like crazy like especially on this end um, I don't know why it just uh, these cords really suck so I wanted to limit how much we were unplugging this thing which was a lot you know at least um, anywhere between 10 to three times a month uh, if I had to guess so um, on Starlink's website they have this roof mount that's adjustable um, and what I did was I just simply bolted it into the to the hay rack right here and put the bolts here on the other side and the nice thing about this is when it's time to travel um, the cord is still plugged in by the way it's not right now but the cord's still plugged in and we just drop it down and then tighten this up and then it's ready to travel um, sometimes we might even leave it up when we travel but I I just feel a little safer when we set it down and you're if you're wondering about rubbing uh, yeah it rubs some but it's not like destroying the Starlink um, when it lays down uh, before I do lay it down I put it into stow mode so it'll go from this which it's pointing out a satellite right now but it'll go up towards like that when you're in stow mode so um, that was my permanent mount solution the nice thing about it is you can still come up here pop the Starlink off and we still have the uh, the legs that came with it and we can go put it somewhere else if we have like an issue with a tree or something uh, I have a second cord that we can run to this in case we we park under a tree for shade or something so uh, the nice thing about it is it's still flexible for those reasons and um, I'm able to, to move this it's not quite a permanent mount but it's a permanent mount for when we're driving that's for sure now that I've shown you how everything works with the Starlink system um, I just need to uh, reroute this cord I right, right now I have it temp temporarily routed but I need a more permanent solution I'm gonna go over and show you guys how to do that right now okay Starlink's right there I already have it routed down into the Starlink but like I said I'm looking for a little bit more of a permanent solution not quite permanent but kind of permanent so right now I have the cord pushed up under the hay rack which I didn't do this before because I was lazy and um, in a hurry so I'm gonna go under the hay rack and get it to the Starlink uh, I will zip tie it to this beam right here Okay, I have that zip zip tied down and and so it won't come loose, but I didn't tighten it all the way down. I think it's going to be important for all you guys not to tighten any zip ties or anything down until uh, you're completely finished. That way you can adjust the cord back and forth accordingly as you need to. Okay, up and under the hay rack, zip tied to the hay rack left a lot of slack here for folding and I double zip tied to the base not the mount because I need to be able to take off the mount occasionally and like I said this plug goes bad so much that I want it not to move at all and be pretty supported I haven't tightened that down yet but um, I will when the project's almost done okay Definitely want to get that done first because it is getting really hot. But as you can see, we come down here. I got all this cord in the horse area, which is going to be no bueno once we get our horses loaded in a couple weeks. So um, the next part, I'm going to run up into this channel right here. But most of you guys probably won't have access to that channel like I do because all of mine was riveted so I've done many lighting projects and needed a lot of access behind these panels to get to the wires and I have a lot of videos on that if you want to go check them out uh, but I've 
I drilled all those out already and replaced them with uh, sheet metal screws. So I'm gonna pop all those off and tuck the cord away and get it over to the Starlink router up front, which is up front over there. Unfortunately, getting up here was really hard because of all the hay up here. Uh, we just loaded it yesterday. Um, we found some really cheap hay in Washington and we're taking it to uh, the Midwest with us because it is uh, dirt cheap. $6 a bale. They're really nice, heavy, compressed bales. So when you start this project, I know from experience, make sure you have something to throw all your screws into or they'll get lost very quickly. So I went and grabbed this bucket. I, uh, like I said, I've done a lot of lighting projects and I actually cleaned up all the wiring in here because it was ridiculous before and I got these nice little, I got these little zip tie things that are amazing and I'm gonna be using that on a lot of this. So uh, let's start figuring out how to tuck this cord away. When I tighten this down, it's gonna be difficult. So the cord's gonna go up in the middle between the two screws right here. And I'm gonna leave this somewhat loose because um, I have to be able to pop these panels off and I think if it's really tight it'll make it difficult but first I got to get it stuck up in there first and I need to go get my zip ties put a zip tie and that little sticky mount there uh, I will tighten this up pretty tight right here I'm gonna leave this kind of loose right there and then it it's gonna be in the middle of this like right here like that when it's all said and done and then it's mounted up there now, the hard part's gonna be getting this big old bundle tucked in under there. Um, I, I'm gonna go let out some more screws to make my life easier, so I need to go around there and do that. All right. Now that I have that all the way mounted, I can actually go up top and tighten all my zip ties and tighten all this down. All right, I'm gonna pull, pull this pretty tight. I got the starling hooked up. I got that cord routed up to there. Zip tied it down just in a couple places, not too many. As you guys saw, that's all strapped down. Goes up top. And we're almost done. I'm not gonna show myself bolting that back up because I actually have another project to do, which involves this camera right here. Um, while we're driving, we want to keep an eye on the dogs so that video is coming up soon um, that camera is gonna get wired into the wiring up there so let's go do a test and see how the Starlink's doing let's power it up white lights on right there that's good to go let's go check on the, the satellite it's 
pretty rough, but hopefully you guys can see this. It says it's online. There's flat mode. Maybe I'll start driving in flat mode. All right, it's getting real hot, but I'm pretty much all done. Um, just to recap, you guys are probably wondering, why didn't you put a hole in the roof? Why didn't you put a junction box in with a, a nipple around the, the wiring and all that stuff? And the answer is I hate drilling holes in my roof if I don't have to. And as you guys saw my routing, I don't have to. So just to finalize, let's go recap on, on what I did here. Got the excess all bundled up and tucked in here. Have that coming under and out the door. And then we go up under the hay rack, pop up here, zip tie to the hay rack, and securely mount the cord to the Starlink. Okay, if you guys enjoyed that, please hit that like button, make sure to subscribe. Like I said throughout the video, I have more videos coming up on uh, horse trailer projects and you know we live in our horse trailers so uh, I learned how to adapt living situations into our full-time lifestyle that we do so uh, make sure you stay tuned you, you're not going to want to miss any of that hit your notification bell to get notified and I will see you guys on the next Red Beard Outdoors episode remember get outdoors and keep up with your Starlink I'll catch you guys on the next one